How can we tell the story of our species, Homo sapiens, over 300,000 years across seven continents? Well, let's try doing it using six objects. Because these objects tell a tale that spans all the way back to the distant past. First off, a skull that transformed our understanding of how and when we came into existence. Here's a question we should all probably know the answer to. When did our species begin? Like, how old are we? Well, until recently, we got that completely wrong. For a long time, our species, Homo sapiens, were thought to have emerged about 200,000 years ago, probably in East Africa. But then research conducted at one site warped our understanding completely. Back in the 60s, in a remote cave in Morocco, a mining operation stumbled across a fossilised skull. Soon, the site was full of archaeologists, and over the years, they discovered human remains that were frankly kind of weird. This is a replica of Jebel Urhud 1, which is one of the fossils that was found in that Moroccan cave. This skull was so confusing for archaeologists because it has a mishmash of features. So if you look at this brow ridge here, that protrudes so much, you would just not find that on a Homo sapiens living today. That is very old. It's more reminiscent of some of the older species, like Neanderthals, for example. And yet, yeah, the face, that's pretty gracile. It's very delicate, very similar to our own. It's kind of all tucked in underneath the brain case. So how did this really strange mix fit into the human tree? It was a complete mystery. Some people thought perhaps it was an African Neanderthal. Others thought it was just some strange thing that was happening in Morocco and had nothing to do with us. So this skull that is a strange blend of old and new is actually around 300,000 years old and a Homo sapiens. So it pushes back the age of our species by about 100,000 years. Turns out, thanks to this discovery, we're a lot older than we thought we were. This fossil was also found in Morocco, remember? And we used to think our origins were in East Africa. And so it points to a much more complex, continent-wide process that led to the beginning of our species. Next, a mysterious rock formation that reveals the awakening of human minds. If you were to meet an early Homo sapiens, you might recognise them. They might look like us, but did they think like us? Well, there's a cave in the Zadilo Hills of Botswana that contains a clue. The rocks were formed in a way which looks like the body and the head of a snake. Now, the overall shape is natural, but there is nothing natural about the detail. The rock has over 300 man-made indentations all over, and those indentations end up looking like scales. So were the people in the cave trying to make the rock look even more like a snake? Archaeologists also found the remnants of prehistoric tools that were burnt or intentionally smashed. Why would you go to the trouble of making a tool only to damage it. Well, some of the archaeologists that have worked on this material have suggested that it's ritualistic destruction. Could this be an offering? All of this points towards a kind of abstract thought. This cave paints a picture of these people that were able to see and think beyond what was tangibly in front of them. Now, that is something that we thought only happened quite recently. But this site is dated to about 70,000 years ago. And we can't be 100% sure how they were thinking and about their belief system. But it's possible that they were asking for very similar things to what we would ask for. Health, children, food. And it's remarkable to think that a cave like that shows us some of the beginnings of the behaviors which we, you and I, and every single person on the planet know so well. Christmas, Eid, birthdays, Glastonbury. We are obsessed with ritual and this cave shows us that we have been for a very, very long time. Now, a piece of technology that helped humans conquer new environments. The rainforest. Dynamic, dangerous and full of predators. You'd think it would be a bad place for squishy bipedal apes like us. And it does seem like all the other species of human avoided the rainforest 
and yet we took it on by adapting our technology so that we could thrive there. Now, when I say technology, be honest, you're imagining weapons, bows, arrows, spears, and that's a huge part of the story. But deep within the Sri Lankan rainforest, we also see something else. The teeth of monkeys who lived in the canopies of this rainforest, which had been sharpened and modified, perhaps to puncture materials like animal hides. This might have allowed humans to string together plant and animal materials, perhaps creating things like clothes, bags, shelter. And all of this would have been fundamental to living in the challenging environment that is a rainforest, where clothes could protect humans from insect-borne diseases, shelter would keep them safe from the rain, and bags could be created to carry equipment over long distances. You can imagine grandparents sitting there with their grandchildren, teaching them how to use these tools, teaching them how to perfect the techniques. They show us something amazing about our species, how we adapted technology and passed it on so that we could take on environments once thought to be impenetrable. Next, some fossils that show we were a lot more intimate with other species of human than we once thought. Most of you watching this have about 2% Neanderthal DNA, which basically means that one of your great, 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 go back a lot of great grandparents got busy with a Neanderthal. In the early 2000s, these fossils were discovered in a Wase cave in Romania. Now, if you look at these replicas, they do clearly look Homo sapiens, but if you look really closely, there are some features on them which are kind of mysterious. The large molars, and notice the forehead. It recedes. Those features are Neanderthal. This led the team to wonder if this was evidence of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens interbreeding. Thanks to a revolution in ancient DNA technology, we now know that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens did interbreed and that one of those Awase fossils was in fact definitely a hybrid. They had a Neanderthal relative about four to six generations earlier. This Neanderthal genetic legacy in us is really interesting, not just because it tells us something about the private lives of our ancestors, but because it tells us something about our DNA today. See, that Neanderthal DNA within us is associated with both positive and negative things. On the plus side, the Neanderthal DNA is associated with things like immunities and even increased fertility. And on the negative, it's associated with things like increased severity of COVID. The Neanderthals have died out, but for better or worse, a part of them still lives on within us. Now on to a remarkable prehistoric weapon that helped humanity triumph in a whole new continent. Imagine being the first humans to set foot in the Americas. No other species of human had, and so it was a landmass that was untouched by human activity, including hunting. So imagine the creatures you would have encountered there. Mammoths, giant bison, mastodons. So isn't it amazing that these prehistoric humans looked at these animals and thought, yum. This is a Clovis spearhead. These artifacts are around 13,000 years old and they are extraordinarily well-crafted. Long and narrow, thinning towards the end with sharp edges allowing them to pierce the hides of enormous animals. But there's another version of the Clovis spearhead that is mysterious, striking, and beautiful. This is a spearhead made of crystal quartz. Quartz crystal is beautiful to look at, but vulnerable to shattering. So if it wasn't used as a weapon, what was it used for? Maybe it was ceremonial. We also know that a boy from this period was buried with about a hundred Clovis-like tools, again pointing to this idea that this technology had deep cultural meaning. Finally, a small written document that exemplifies the power and scale of human ambition. What if I was to tell you that the first of the Great Pyramids of Giza, one of the most astonishing achievements in human history, was built thanks in part 
to a boring spreadsheet. Day 24, Inspector Mirror spends the day with his file hauling stones. Day 25, Inspector Mirror spends the day with his team hauling stones. Riveting read. So how did this lead to that? It was here on the Red Sea coast that archaeologists discovered fragments of a text dating back over 4,500 years. This, thought to be the world's oldest known papyrus, is the diary of Mera, a time capsule for the reign of the pharaoh Khufu. Khufu is best known for overseeing the construction of the first of the Great Pyramids of Giza. And Mera, the author of this diary, was an inspector an official involved in the transportation of things like limestone and food supplies, and his journal describes just that. It is a bit amusing that one of humanity's oldest known texts is essentially a spreadsheet. A dull list of goods and transportation details, the kind of thing that you would hate to be given at work. But it's the kind of thing that you need to actually build the pyramids. You see, humanity by this point were much more numerous, and writing allowed us to communicate with each other and organize these huge numbers of people. And maybe there's some comfort in the diary of Mera. It's nice to realize that boring spreadsheets are not a uniquely modern thing. So hopefully these six objects give you a sense of our 300,000 year old story. But if you want another object, just look in the mirror because you are a byproduct of that journey.